Listen up, fellas. Do you ever find yourself skipping meals or ordering takeout when life gets busy? We all know this can be a hard habit to break. Look, that's where control comes in. They're a brand owned and operated by gamers and content creators who decided to make healthier food options for people who struggle in the kitchen. If you're looking to eat healthier meals, but lose weight. Their meal replacement shakes are the best option. With 23 grams of protein, vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and MCTs, they will fill you up for hours and they taste amazing. If you're looking for a high protein snack, they also got protein cookies. And they got protein meal bars which is hard to say with my mouthful, but guys, this is truly delicious. I got a son right over here. He didn't know anything about healthy cookies. These are the ones that he turns to all the time. I'm not joking about that. They've only got 250 calories. With 15 grams of protein, four grams of collagen, our cookies are the perfect blend of health and taste. Their meal bars also pack in 15 grams of protein, and they got a ton of fiber. Controllers really help me to stay on track with my nutrition. If you want to make a healthier change, Use the promo code CHAIL to get 10% off your first order, or just click on the link below. I think that we all would understand Prohaska returning and fighting for the belt. As a matter of fact, guys, I, I would go one step further, but now I'm a fan long enough to remember when Ronda Rousey and Jose Aldo were named world champions of the UFC without ever having competed in the UFC. My fanage goes back to the time. I remember the night they woke Matt Hughes up, who was unconscious, and informed he was the champion of the world. I mean, like if we're if we're gonna do this, why don't we just give him the belt? I'm not arguing that we go in that direction, Matthew. Mean, why not? Prohaska, right? I believe in the survivor clause. I've always believed in the survivor clause. I don't think Charles Oliveira should be forced to do a fight that he's told the world he's too hurt to do. I don't think he should. I think that Benny DeRue should have taken the fight. I don't care if he lost his last one. It's called a survivor clause. It's very common within our industry. I mean, I bring that to you because we got three champions that walked away from the belt. And I believe whoever comes for it first should be given the belt. I do. John Jones cuts down to 205. And they should hand him the belt if he's the first one to get there. If Prohaska is the first one to get there, they should hand him the belt. If Jamal comes back, Jamal comes back for the championship that he never lost, just hand him the belt. Or you don't have to, or you can have him go fight for it. Like, that's fine, too. I'm just sharing for you, like, all of these scenarios work. And I understand that we're going into Sillyville just a little bit, but this Prohaska thing, guys, this is weird. And the only way that you're hearing from Prohaska ever since December 2nd of last year, is in a monologue. And I don't think that anybody understands the importance of that better than me. I got nine j Brones at the Luxor in Las Vegas that want to get a Bentley, and you guys all want to know the story. But there's nobody to ask me the story because there's nobody here. It's just me talking. It's very relevant because you keep hearing from Prohaska, but you don't hear him get interviewed. Now, I become a very big Prohaska fan to the point that I would call myself a Prohaska supporter. It was very serendipitous. I catch up with King Mo. There's few people in this sport I enjoy visiting with more than King Mo. He's just so knowledgeable. Plus, he's a super cool guy. But I'm catching up with King Mo, and he's telling me he's fought Prohaska twice. And Shale, this guy is different. Forget everything that you think that you know about him. This guy gives me this whole rundown. Mo beat him one time, by the way. Mo, beat, Mo stopped him. Had to rematch him and did not want to do the rematch. He stopped him and didn't want to. This is Mo telling me. He told me the story. He said, man, yeah, the guy, he's, he's got a will. He's got a grit. He comes after. He's different. He's got angles. He's got power. Very high praise, particularly from King Mo. I leave this lunch with King Mo. I'm walking through the lobby. I run into CB Dalloway. CB brings up Prohaska and gives him the equal amount of praise that Mo just did. So I'm on board. I'm, okay, I didn't know any of these things, but now I'm looking at him right. And, and, and what your peers say and think about you, it's so important because it's always true. Your peers are always right, good or bad. So all of a sudden, I'm a Prohaska fan. Okay. But I'm confronted with a big problem, which is getting information on Prohaska. So he says he's going to come back and fight. The UFC believes he's going to come back and fight. A lot of us thought we should just look at the hardest and most competitive, highest-ranked match that we currently have signed and just put the belt on that. 
That would represent Saturday in Salt Lake City, co-main event, Jan Blahovich, former world champion, Alex Pierre, former world champion, and we're going to make that for the 205-pound championship that Jamal just gave back. That's what a lot of us thought. But the UFC spoke up, and they said, we're not going to put a belt around one of these guys when Prohaska, the rightful champion, is just about to return. All right, that's a big statement. Then you have from Pearl Hoskins, he's looking great. He's got the abs showing. He's working on the hairdo. He's saying all the right things. He went and sat in a cave for seven, eight, seven days, whatever that means. But he looks good, right? You can't just look good. You, you, there's training that you have to do. But we can't ignore the fact that the shoulder injury story can turn out to be complete bull SHI asterisks. We can't deny that. We were told the shoulder was the worst shoulder we've ever seen to the point that he may not return. Not only is he about to return, we were told that in December, and we were told that he was going to return in January. It was only a month later when the whole I'm going to return, I've been misdiagnosed started to come out. But then we hear that USADA had tested him 27 times in 30 days, which is a record to our knowledge. Those numbers could be wrong. might have been 22 and 25 days. You get my point right up there. What did they find? Now, USADA coming out to test him all those times does not mean he's dirty. It means they think he's dirty. It's 100% what it means. Travis Taggart and company would not deny that. If we're at your door and you're in a foreign country and it costs us an arm and a leg and we show up 25 times in 30 days, we think you're on something. We also think we know how to catch it. Now, that's okay. That's them doing their job, by the way. That wasn't a put down. But I'm sharing with you when that's not cleared up and then you hear from Prohaska that I'm about to return. In a monologue, you can get away with that. If you're doing an interview and you're with somebody worth the salt, let's call it me. I'm going to ask very simple questions. Who are you training with? Real small world like to know what gym so I know what bodies are in there, and then I can kind of go behind your back later and find out how often you're in there and are you sparring and how you're looking. So I'm going to gather that piece of information. I'm going to ask you, are you in the pool? I'm going to ask you, did you remain in the pool? There would be no reason for somebody who suffered the worst shoulder injury we've ever seen to be in the pool. Like, it wouldn't even be up to him. Somebody would just pull him from the pool. You're now retired. They took the belt from him. But that would have been a mistake. Turning out that he was fine by January, according to his social media, that would have been a huge mistake. But either way, if it happened, including if it happened momentarily, if he retired for one hour, I'm making numbers up at the prove a point. If he retired and one hour later said I'm unretired, he still defaults to 180 days or six months, which you're hearing about Conor McGregor. Is that what's happening? Did they remove him from the pool in December? Did they realize by January it was a mistake? Did they put him back in the pool? And he's actually cleared already. Or did they not put him in and they waited till April? And we're still counting days down. Things that have absolutely nothing to do with the pool. Like, I, I mean, I'll listen to any of these things. But there's another rule within USADA which says if we flag you, instead of coming out and destroying you like we did so many other guys, we will allow the arbitration process to take place silently. And if you prevail, we will never release to the world what the holdup has been. We'll allow you to say you're injured. We will allow you to say you're ill. We'll allow you to say that you're on vacation. Allow you to say anything you want if you prevail. It was a very big deal. They brought three guys down in one month. All three ended up being innocent. But the guys were, sponsors were gone, reputation, it's all over the internet. It was the right move by Osana. Step forward and go, hey, we got to fix this. And they did. But, I'm sharing with you, I would have to ask him some of these questions because it was the worst injury ever in December. No reason to keep a guy, worst ever in December, we're going to take his belt away. By January, according to social media, he's ready to fight. According to USADA, they got an eye on him in the first place. 
So if all of a sudden he goes off the grid, oh, and by the way, it repairs the world's worst shoulder injury in a month, they're going to be suspicious. I don't believe they found him with anything. That's not what I'm here to report for you. What I'm here to report for you is this thing stinks and it stunk from the beginning. I'm hurt on December 4th. I got a fight on December 10th. By the way, not only am I not showing up, here's my belt. Simultaneous with Francis Ngannou has sat on his ass for 10 months and you let him keep the belt. I've been hurt one week. He's been out for 10 months and ridiculing you publicly. He kept the belt. I get stripped. There's something about this that stinks. Oh, by the way, if you did strip him or you accepted the relinquish of the title and you kept him in the pool, like if you guys come away here and think that, oh, Chael's letting us know he might have left the pool, you would be missing the point. He should have been taken out of the pool. If you stop his ability to get a paycheck as a prize fighter, you take his belt away, you're giving it to somebody else. He loses his position. He's not, he's not even the right. He's out. He's done. He's gonzo. Why would you possibly keep him in the pool? They should have removed him. That would have been the responsible thing to do. But if they did remove him, they got to put him back in. When did he go in? Oh, by the way, when the world's worst shoulder got better in three weeks, was he in the pool? It's a very interesting question. Why do we have a guy that's healed, publicly stated he's healed, but he doesn't have a date? He appears to have an opponent named Alex Piera. They've even began the media cycle. Both of them, back and forth. Very interesting fight from the X's and O's. But no official announcement that he's returned, which is why you continue to see monologues. And if you happen to be one of the guys that gets a dialogue, ask him that question. Are you in? Have you always been in? Were you removed? Was it your option to be removed from the pool? 